Hello, my name is Voltaine Black, and today we're going to be talking about characters. Now, characters really run the story, and a compelling character is essential to the success of a book. Oftentimes, there will be multiple characters, and you want to have each character extremely well developed and an engaging character. Now, I'm often asked who my favorite book character is, and honestly, I can't choose just one. There are so many great characters throughout all of literature, but I've narrowed down my favorite to three. So this is actually going to be my first series. Each of these videos, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite characters, their role in the plot, and why they're my favorite. So the first character that we're going to be talking about is Keith Senkin from Keepers of the Lost Cities. Just a warning, throughout this series there will be spoilers, so if you have not read any of these books and want to in the future, please click off the video now. Today we're going to be talking about Keith Senkin, who is from the unfinished Keeper of the Lost Cities tr series. It's a fantasy series about elves who live in these lost cities and have to protect the humans from a wide variety of things that the book gets into. Um, Keith is one of these elves who's lived his entire life in this city, and he has these powers like all the other elves. Two of the powers that elves have pertain to the mind. One is telepathy, and one is empathy. Empathy is the power that Keith has. He is able to read and alter people's emotions. In the first book, Keith doesn't really play a major role. The main character, Sophie Foster, is introduced to him, and he's really just a goofball. He has a goofy personality, and he's widely known as a prankster and a jokester. One thing in the book that is referenced a lot is his most legendary prank, the Great Gulan Incident which is never actually explained in the books, and likely never will. This is actually a fantastic um, writing element where you say something and let the reader finish it in their head, because what the reader will think of is infinitely better than you could have think of, and is actually special to each reader, and they can come up with their own theories and everything. Now, you don't want to do this too much, because your story will then get vague, and everyone's like, what? What's going on? But... A having plot points like this where people can like fill in the details themselves is an actually really good idea. While Keith is very much a minor character in the first book, Keepers of the Lost Cities, in the second book, Exile, he graduates from a minor character to a major character status. He opens up to Sophie in this book, telling her that he hides behind humor and jokes to cope with his own insecurities and his inner battles. He's constantly insecure about himself because his father is verbally abusive and tells him he will never succeed at anything. He also shows a more compassionate side of himself when he's comforting S Sophie when her adopted father's mind is broken. In the third book, Everblaze, Keith helps the rest of the team uncover the mysteries of the Black Swan, which ends up being a benevolent organization trying to help the Lost Cities in secret. And in the end, he confronts his mother about his past, and thus begins his deep grudge against her due to her manipulation. In the fourth installment of the series, Never Seen, you definitely get to see Keith's darker side, especially when it comes to his mother, who has been manipulating him all along. In the end of the book, he betrays the Black Swan and joins the Never Seen, a malicious secret organization attempting to bring about the downfall of the Lost Cities. The Black Swan is to good as the Never Seen are to evil. The fifth installment, Lodestar, it was revealed actually that his motives in joining the Never Seen was actually to infiltrate it and get intel and answers. He siphons these information to Sophie, who has telepathic capabilities and can read minds, and with her friends she can read it over long distances. That was Keith's role in Lodestar. In book six, Nightfall, he breaks all connections with the Never Seen and joins Black with the Black Swan. He learns about a lot of the evil ways of his mother in this book, who turns out to be one of the leaders of the Never Seen. This causes him to swear an oath against her and try to defeat her every chance he gets. In the last book so far, Flashback, he confesses his love towards Sophie, but she ends up choosing Fitz as her love interest, who is actually Keith's best friend. This leads him to becoming heartbroken, which he covers up with more of his signature snark and humor. That is a very common theme of him. He has all this baggage within him, all these insecurities, his heartbreak, 
his, the manipulation his mother did, childhood trauma, all of these things that he pushes deep down and covers with jokes, humor, so everybody thinks he's just this likable goofball. That is all we've seen with Keefe so far, and I can't wait to see what the rest of the series has in store for him. I might even make up a follow video when we find out more about him. Another great thing about Keefe is he starts out as a good guy, helping the protagonist and her friends, but then he betrays them. This is one of the best scenes in the book, because it shows his desperation for answers about himself and how haunted he truly is, that he would betray all of his friends to get these answers. Fortunately, we get him back as a good guy, but he will never be the same after he's seen what he's seen by joining the Never Scene. Nonetheless, he still cracks jokes, and all in all, he's a very funny character. He even makes his bodyguard call him Lord Hunky Hair for an entire book because the guard lost a bet with him. Now, in order to really appreciate Keefe, we're going to have to hear some quotes from Keefe himself. So, the first one, somebody says to Keefe, Why else would you spend so much time helping Miss Foster's causes? He responds, uh, have you seen how cute she is, right? He's a very flirtatious character with Sophie throughout the books. In another scene, his bodyguard, Rose, says to him, It's amazing he made it through this without me bashing his pretty face in. Keefe responds, Aw, you hear that? Ro thinks I'm pretty. I mean, usually I go for more, like, ruggishly handsome. While he says a lot of jokes, some of his quotes are really profound. One of them uh, is, I'm always with you, Foster. Whatever you need, I'm in. This shows his dedication to Sophie and really drives home when he actually betrays her because you realize his deep connection to Sophie and the fact that he's breaking that is really indicating of his desperation. Possibly his best quote is of the follows. Our family doesn't decide who we are. Believe me, it drives my parents crazy, and sometimes that's the only thing that gets me through the day. Your family doesn't decide who you are. You decide who you are. And Keefe realizes this through the books as he grows to realize that he's not who his family says he is. He's a completely different character. He doesn't have to conform to his family's expectations. So there are two more funny quotes that I want to share with you. And then one is the best quote he has. The other one was one of the best quotes he has. The, the last one that I want to share with you is the best quote he has ever said. And it really describes his character. But first, the jokes. So first thing is Keefe says, I've kissed a lot of things. Just ask by Annika. Sophie responds, you've kissed by Annika? And Keefe responds, mostly on the cheek. Sophie goes, what do you mean, mostly? And Keefe responds with his famous snark, you want a demonstration? It's such a great scene, and it really contributes to Keefe's character. So this quote comes after Keefe has done a heroic thing, saving people, whatever. He goes, fine, but at least you should have to write an epic poem in my honor. Here, I'll help you. Ode to Keefe Senkin, the brave, lovable nut. He may not have teal eyes, but at least he has a cute... He stops there, letting the reader fill in the rest of his sentence. And lastly, the quote that sums up his character. He says to Sophie in, I believe it was Never Seen, he says, I crack a lot of jokes, Sophie, but that's just because it's easier, you know? It's how I deal, but that doesn't mean I don't care. I do.